Okay, so this all works, as we said, only because everything is lined up perfectly. The camera is right along the Z-axis in line with the barrel. So the shot travels out along the world Z-axis and the barrel comes back along the world Z-axis. Now what we want to talk about is the difference between the world Z-axis and the object's axis. So an object, so if you do this, you can see you got an arrow pointing up, pointing over, and pointing forward. Those match the world axes. But what happens when you start rotating this? Now, X is coming out this way, and blue and blue's, uh, Z is going out this way. So there's actually a way to acknowledge that relative um, direction and fire along that direction rather than the world's axis. So how do we do that? First, let's take the buffer and make it a child to the camera. Ultimately, the buffer should move with the camera because in a first-person shooter, the camera really is the player. At least the player's point of view. There may be an avatar behind the camera, but ultimately you need to move the camera around. So, for demonstrative purposes, so you definitely want to do this, but you don't have to do what I'm about to do next. And that is for demonstrative purposes, I'm going to add two components to the teleshot just so you can see it. So mesh, mesh renderer, mesh, and mesh filter. And for the mesh filter, it's going to be an orb. That way you can see it. Now, let's take the camera. I'm going to move the camera over. And then we're going to rotate it. But watch what happens. So I'm going to hit the space bar. See, it's not shooting towards the center of the screen anymore. It's still traveling along the world Z axis. Now, you couldn't really tell that in the last one because we we're facing along the world Z axis. Now you can see that it's not firing in the direction that we're firing. Now, extra level complexity, you could have reticle moving around. We're not going to go into that level of complexity. This is just meant to be introductory. So how do we keep firing in that direction? We need to use relative force. So telecon, this is what controls the direction that it's being shot in. So rather than using velocity, let's remark this out. So get component. It'll still be the rigid body because that's what allows for physics, but it's going to be relative force. So add relative force. It's not going to be on X. It's not going to be on Y. Like we said, we want to move forward going to be Z. So actually, let's make that 300. See if we can make this move fast. So as you can see, it uses an entirely different counting system. So now watch what happens. Actually, one more thing. We also need to rotate. We have to take that inherited rotation and make this rotate. So what we want to do is shot con is where the uh, teleshot is instantiated. It's instantiated right here. So rather than using the tele object's own rotation, we're going to use the um, camera's rotation. So just transform dot rotate. So just as transform dot position is the position of the object the script is attached to, transform dot rotation is the rotation of the object the script is attached to, and the script is attached to the main camera. And therefore, the main camera's uh, rotation is applied to the tele object when it is instantiated. So we've rotated the um, shot to match that of the camera. And now we're going to say relative force. So relative to the Z axis of the object, not the world axis. And watch the difference. There you go, you're shooting towards the center again. Now it's just a matter of lining up, which is no big deal. So let's do that. Okay, same thing. He's traveling, or should I say the barrel is traveling right along the Z-axis. So that means we need to reverse this. We need to add relative force to the barrel. So we can do that. 
In fact, let's just take this. Go to the barrel. And we already have a place to do that, where the teleshot strikes it. So we'll mark that out. And we'll put it here. But there's a problem. It hasn't changed its rotation. So what we need to do, and this is a bit of a cheat, when the teleshot strikes the barrel, we're going to grab the rotation of the camera, apply it to the barrel, and then we're going to use the relative force. But, just as this is forward, this is forward. So we can't say, okay, positive, we actually have to go with a negative. So, like I said, we're cheating a little bit, but it's basically just reversing what just happened. So, all right, so when the teleshot strikes the barrel, it's going to move in a negative direction. But the first thing that we want to happen is we want its rotation to match that of the camera. So we need to capture that of the camera. So we need one more script. Create, C sharp, we'll call this cam con, short for camera control. And realistically, in a FPS, you're going to have a script attached to the camera anyways. So what do we want in CamCon? A, we need to create a variable. So public, static, it needs to be static so it's accessible to the other scripts and other objects. Public, static, float, because it's only one and it's gonna be potentially a decimal. Public, static, float, and we'll call this cam, rotate so we're going to track the camera rotation and how we do that well this script is attached to the camera so with every frame cam rotate is going to be set to transform dot your angles dot y so with every frame update this variable to the y because if you notice over here it's the y axis the camera is rotating on so grab the camera's rotation and then the, because it's static we can now apply it here Actually, we'll do the same thing. Just transform dot your angles zero, and we said it's going to be uh, that variable camcon dot camera rotate. So we're rotating the object the script is attached to. The script is attached to the barrel. So when the teleshot strikes the barrel, it'll rotate to match the rotation of the camera. But because it's facing away, we just need it to move backwards. So it shoots out. And there we go. So now, to demonstrate that this isn't just a one-off, I'm going to take this, rotate this around. You're going to see that it's going to work from this angle as well, as long as I can get it centered. Oops, not quite centered. So again, we're not using a reticle. It's just going to be dead center. I don't want to get too complicated. Bam, and there we go. All right, so I think that's a good place to end for this one because we took what was a functionality that worked only in uh, really an unrealistic condition. Everything had to be lined up just right. Now, mobility isn't a problem. So I think that should do it for now. Uh, we're going to add probably more bells and whistles the next time. Like maybe we'll add a glow. Maybe rather than just moving at you, maybe it'll raise up first and then shoot at you. 
Um, and then maybe we'll look at other effects like this is telekinesis. Maybe next we'll do like pyrokinesis. So rather than moving, it'll catch on fire and then detonate, that kind of thing. So uh, I think that's it for this lesson.